Andrew Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The GCSB issue has been an utter fiasco from beginning to end, and no one, even the National Party, can, can deny it. The National Party cannot deny that this has been an utter fiasco. Today in this Parliament, during question time, I, ta I uh, tabled uh, the timeline uh, of the coincidences, the coincidences that have occurred uh, with the GCSB, with the SIS, yes I did, with the SIS, with Warner Brothers, with the Motion Pictures Association of America, and with the Prime Minister, and with other, and with other ministers. And quite frankly, Mr Speaker, this has been a litany of cover-up throughout. Here at the heart of government, we've seen, seen a lit litany of failure and incompetence, and John Key is right at the centre of it. He is full of blame for the whole affair, and he's trying to wash his hands of it from afar in China. It is worse than a disgrace. It is an appalling breakdown in an agency that works behind closed doors, that works hidden from public scrutiny. The one agency in this country which handles our international intelligence affairs, answerable to the Prime Minister, and where the Prime Minister himself has been found sadly lacking appalling management of it, appalling governance of it, and quite frankly, if he held his own standards he, when he was a leader of the opposition, he said he would hold his ministers to the highest level of account. If he was to hold himself to the same highest levels of account, by now he would have tendered his resignation. Because, quite frankly, any other minister, if they had performed so badly at overseeing a department, uh, and I at this stage take, uh, rule out the likes of Hekia Parada uh, and Jerry Brownlee with the Christchurch situation, uh, because the, they're probably close to it, but any other minister who would have been so incompetent, uh, such as the Prime Minister, in overseeing the GCSB, by now would have been stood down. By now would have been stood down. The mess must be cleaned up, and it must be cleaned up fast. And that calls, that calls for the Prime Minister to admit his culpability and that he is simply not up to the task of having oversight of this agency. Patches and quick, and quick fixes will not do. We're beyond that. What we required, and, and the Honourable Jerry Brown, he said, tell us, tell us how we'll fix it. Tell us how we'll fix it. <coughs> well, we'll fix it by having a proper, independent judicial inquiry. That means, that means taking it out of the hands of the ministers with all the vested interests. That means taking it out of the hands of the ministers who, throughout the timeline, are highlighted here with their paw prints all over the timeline. That means putting it in the hands. That means putting it in the hands of an independent High Court judge to independently review this whole process. Because sending in Miss Kitteridge, uh, the Prime Minister's uh, Cabinet Secretary, is hardly an inquiry. That is sending in your person. That is sending in your person to get the answers that you require. Uh, to find out something that will help sort yourself out, to get yourself out of a mess. Order. That, Don't bring sorry, the speaker. Not, sorry, Mr. Speaker, not yourself, but the Prime Minister. To get the Prime Minister out of the mess. Mr. Speaker, the former director of the GCSB, Sir Bruce Ferguson, who has a long and distinguished military career, this week has said that the Prime Minister must be smoking something. He, he said that the Prime Minister must be smoking dope. Must be smoking dope. For somebody like Sir Bruce Ferguson, and I know Sir Bruce Ferguson from his days uh, in the Air Force and that, uh, for him to make a comment like that, it is extraordinary. There has never been in this country a situation where somebody who has held such a high office in the civil service, a situation where he has said the Prime Minister must have been smoking dope. And quite frankly, and quite frankly, Perhaps, perhaps that question must be asked to the Prime Minister L. Was he smoking dope? Because he seems to have an incredibly poor memory. He seems to have an incredibly poor memory. And we do all know that people who smoke a lot of dope tend to have a very poor memory. So, so the questions need to be asked is, 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 as Sir Bruce Ferguson said, is the Prime Minister a dope smoker? 
Is he a dope smoker? Because he seems to have a shocking memory, or a conveniently shocking memory, when it comes to important, important facts. This is the same John Key who, in his own electorate of Helensville, didn't realise that there's a 250 kilo German, the size of a German tank, living in his own electorate. Didn't realise that this guy, the wealthiest man in his electorate, wealthier than John Key himself, was living in his electorate. Unbelievable that he didn't know. But is there a, is there a, is there a pattern here? Is there a pattern here? Because also, it beggars belief that John Key doesn't recall um, meeting Mr. Suji, Suji Hura in uh, Hollywood. Mr. Suji Hura, who, who happened to be uh, a director of the Motion Pictures As Association of America and conveniently was involved in the anti-piracy uh, program for Warner Brothers to stop the likes of dot-com operating in New Zealand. But conveniently, the Prime Minister can't remember actually having a meeting with Mr. Suji Hara and the, and the Deputy Prime Minister today uh, couldn't answer four of my questions on the subject. So again, it's sort of one, isn't it convenient that so the, he can't remember meeting the GCSB, can't remember the briefings, can't remember a 250 kilo German in his electorate, can't remember all sorts of, all sorts of things. It is, it is incredible. But you do, you do have to wonder is where did the leak come from? Where did the leak come from? And is this maybe, is this maybe finally that other ministers within the national government have woken up to the fact that their Achilles heel, that their Achilles heel is one Mr John Key? Have they woken up to the fact and thought, ah, as happens, as happens in many countries, when the boss is away overseas, when do you go for the, when do you go for the jugular? You wait till they're overseas and then you shaft them, and then you shaft them. And it's almost so coincidental that the, the minute John Key puts his foot on the soil in China, the minute he puts it on there, somehow the Kitteridge document gets leaked. Now, did it come from the eighth floor? Did it come from the seventh floor? Did it come from the sixth floor? Jerry, what floor are you on? What floor are you on, Jerry? Hey, hey. Did it come from your floor, Jerry? Tony, did it come from your floor, Tony? Whose floor did it come from? Because somebody over there leaked, leaked the document. It came from somebody who's got higher aspirations and would dearly love their beloved leader to not come back from China, and certainly not come back from China as the, as the Prime Minister. So, Mr Speaker, it is very clear, it is very clear that something's got to be done here. Bill English, Bill English, the Deputy Prime Minister today, said the appointment of the GCSP is the Prime Minister's appointment. That, in the end of the day, is correct, but it is not the Prime Minister's prerogative to go out and hand, shoulder tap people, his mates, for the appointment. We still in this country, we still in this country have an independent civil service. Order, we still order, in this country, order. we still in this country oh, pride prime. ourselves of being recognised as the second after Finland. Jerry, you'd know this. After Finland, we're the second least corrupt country in the world. Jerry, you should know that. Order, but order. In this situation, in this situation, this prime minister is bringing that into disrepute. He is seriously undermining our civil service and the independence of our civil service. New Zealand first calls for an independent judicial inquiry. Let's get to the bottom of the GCSB. Let's stop the cover-up. Let's stop the litany of lies. And let's find out exactly what's happening behind the smoke and mirrors of this national government. Honourable Chris. The, these are serious issues and they deserve better.